Uh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to this rate gain webcast. My name is Tim Unwin. Uh, I'm part of the uh, product management team at rate gain. The title of our session today is I'm a revenue manager. What does social media have to do with me? Uh, we like to make these webcast sessions as uh, interactive as possible uh, given the, the kind of limitations of the webcast format. So uh, please feel free to uh, post questions uh, any time during the uh, presentation using the question function in uh, GoToWebinar. And uh, we're always keen to hear about any feedback or input that you might have on uh, the topics that we discuss in our webcast sessions and, and particularly today's topic obviously. So um, you can email us as well after the webcast and uh, we'll be happy to uh, follow up with more specific discussions or uh, we'll certainly be keen to, to hear your feedback. So uh, as I said, the topic for our session today is I'm a revenue manager, what does social media have to do with me? And um, I should, uh, I guess, at the outset make it clear that I'm, I'm not actually a revenue manager, but um, I do know plenty of people who are, and uh, I'm sure that um, in the uh, audience uh, that's joined us today, there are likely to be some representatives from the revenue management community, at least I hope so. Um, so what we're going to do um, is take a look at the relatively orderly world uh, of revenue management, or at least um, that's how it is often portrayed. And we'll compare that orderly and structured picture with the slightly less orderly and maybe somewhat more chaotic environment of uh, social media. And by doing those things, the idea is that we will hopefully um, find a path to enlightenment. Um, that might well be an ambitious target for us uh, one way or another, but we'll certainly try to create uh, a connection between those two worlds in a practical way. And we'll take a look at some of the ideas and the concepts that we've been developing at Rate Gain which can start to have a practical and a measurable impact and which can start to bring the, the world of social media and the world of the revenue manager uh, more closely together. Um, so uh, just uh, before we kind of get into the detail, um, a reminder on the question side of things that uh, you, we'll uh, pick up the questions that you uh, put into the, into the questions function um, towards the end of uh, the presentation. So um, for, uh, let's jump now to uh, a high level view of uh, the world according to the revenue manager or to put it, a, put it another way, maybe a, a rather idealized and simplified view um, of how things quite often work where there are revenue management decisions to be made. Um, the, the main point about this really is that it's, it's, a, it's a repeatable process and it has a, a clear structure of uh, input um, process and output. Um, so we've got various um, data sources which um, most often will include the, the data that's most readily available to us. Um, there can be some uh, competitor rate information uh, although that's often only used for comparison purposes. Um, we might have recent booking statistics which help to show how demand is building. Um, we also have a large amount of historical data, the, the data that shows us what happened last week or last month or last year. So those are our data sources, that's the, the input part of the process flow. And then uh, next we have a, an analysis step. And there are a variety of ways in which that can happen. Um, sometimes there's uh, technology in the picture, like a revenue management system, or some other application to provide decision support. Um, or maybe that process and analysis step is more about human judgment and uh, applying the experience and the knowledge of a revenue manager. But either way, we have a process or a analysis step in the middle. And then on the right hand side, we have the output or the decisions and the actions that are taken um, as a result of the analysis. 
so that might mean a, a bunch of different things. We might be setting a new rate value or revising revenue targets. Uh, we might be restricting inventory in some way or maybe defining a minimum value that we want to achieve with a rate hurdle. Any of the variety of decision points that a revenue manager needs to decide on. The details of this, I guess, are not really the, um, the important part of the picture. The, the key thing is that it's, it's process driven. Now, uh, obviously, it's a process that produces results. We certainly wouldn't uh, continue to spend the amount of time and effort and money that we do on revenue management as a function if it wasn't making a measurable difference. Um, but one of the interesting characteristics, though, is the way that decisions in this model are often quite heavily influenced by previous trends and previous events, the, the historical um, data sources that we identified. So um, let's modify that picture a little bit from the simplistic view, because in the real world, there are vast arrays of uh, factors that will have some level of influence on the pattern of business for a hotel. And they can come from many different sources, some of which might not be immediately obvious. For example, they, there might be factors in the economy which can have an influence, or um, events that occur, events of one type or another, which create a sequence of subsequent events which ultimately leads to some direct influence on the market we're working in. And the point really here is that if we're only looking at historical trends, we run the risk of missing out on something which might have an isolated or a, a much more immediate effect. Now, there's an almost unlimited variety of external factors that we could take into account, but let's, let's look at two relatively simple and specific examples which can illustrate this in a little bit more detail. The first is uh, an economic factor, uh, in a way. Um, it's uh, the way that currency exchange, uh, exchange rates fluctuate, which, uh, as we know, can be something that happens unpredictably and uh, over a short period of time in some situations. Uh, the the uh, slide here has one example that we looked at. Uh, it's from the uh, early part of 2011, late 2010 and early 2011. And during that period, the Japanese yen became less valuable in comparison to uh, the Chinese currencies, but more valuable against the US dollar. And in that same period, if we look at how travel and vacation booking numbers for outbound Japanese travelers uh, changed, what we see is that there was a measurable increase in travel from Tokyo and Osaka to Las Vegas, driven presumably by the better exchange rate values, and also a matching, almost equivalent drop in the volume of travel to Macau. Now, Obviously, if we're looking at this now, we're looking at it with the benefit of hindsight and as a, as a historical trend. But the point is that if, as a hotel, we can get some insight into current patterns of economic activity, that's something we can use as an additional factor in our decisions. But obviously, we need to have access to the appropriate information and know what it means and, and how to use it. The, the second example here is, is a bit more specific to uh, travel industry factors, and it, it shows how promotional activity can have a real influence. There are many specific examples of this, but um, here we're highlighting the Australian budget airline Jetstar, which ran a promotion for flights from Melbourne to Da Nang in uh, Vietnam. And the offer ran for uh, three days, and in that period and immediately afterwards, the budget hotels in the destination actually sold out before any of them um, really had the, uh, the opportunity to change their prices and uh, take advantage of the increase in inbound traffic. And there are really two things that we need to consider here. 
The first is that we need to make sure that we've got the insight into activities which are indirectly linked to our market, such as a promotion by an inbound airline, as it is in this example. But we also need to make sure that we can, we can take full advantage, so that whether there's, that's using technology or some manual process, we need to be able to react in time and have the decisions that we make reliably implemented through our distribution channels to ensure that we can, we can take full advantage. So in summary, from, from that viewpoint, um, a, a strategy can be very successful based on historical patterns, but the consequences may well be very different when we overlay new and current events. So lo what we're looking for in the revenue management world are ways to extend the picture so we can take advantage while those things are still current rather than as part of a, of a historical uh, analysis. Okay, so that was a little a brief little snapshot of the revenue management world. What about social media? Well, um, I guess the first thing to recognize is the, the diversity and the volume of the information that's generated in the social media environment. Um, and not only is it not particularly orderly, there isn't even a, a common definition or understanding of what social media really represents from a revenue management perspective. But uh, what we do need to do is to stay as focused as we can on the revenue. And uh, that can sometimes be hidden in plain sight, as it were, but, but that's really where we need to focus. Um, we might have a lot of unstructured data that we need to deal with, but the objective it remains the same, and that's to ensure that we're optimizing revenue based on all of the information that we have uh, available. And just to diverge a little bit, one of, one of the great things about the world of social media, uh, from my perspective anyway, is the way that it, it generates what seems to be an endless stream of statistics. And those statistics all seem to build on each other to expand really the picture of diversity, or um, I guess chaos um, is another way of looking at it. Um, and, well, I like to work on the principle that it's not really a proper presentation unless it's got some statistics included. So um, here's your ration for today. There's, there's only one slide. Uh, I'm sure you'd be pleased to hear. Um, these are all drawn from a, a variety of reports and infographics that have appeared um, in the last few weeks and with um, due acknowledgement to the uh, authors and originators of those. Um, I'm sure you'll, um, you'll have your own uh, favorites or maybe you've seen some different numbers from these, but um, let, let's just skip through a couple of them. Um, there's a lot of measurement of Facebook. Everything that happens in Facebook gets measured. Um, the one we have here is specifically in the context of brand engagement, and um, it indicates that 80% of Facebook's users see that as their preferred way, see Facebook as their preferred way of engaging with a brand. Now, this doesn't tell us very much about the type of engagement, but it is at least a strong indication of the influence that we all know that, that Facebook has. Uh, Twitter is another very influential social media platform, obviously, and it, it can be seen as quite transient in some ways. But um, here also, from a marketing perspective, what we see is that it, it does potentially generate new business. 34% um, of marketers um, in a survey reported that they had generated leads through Twitter. If we uh, turn to the uh, image and, and photo side of things, which is another significant part of the social media environment, uh, there's an estimate here that Instagram gets um, 5 million new photos loaded every day. I actually saw a, there was a different estimate. I think it was in a Travel Weekly article um, the other week, which put the number at closer to 40 million photos a day. Um, the real number, well, it's probably somewhere in the middle of those two, but either way, it, it's a big number. And if only a small proportion of that image content is somehow related to uh, a guest's 
stay at a hotel or their travel activity, then it's still a, a huge amount of, uh, of uh, pictures of image content. And one way or another, that could be having, in some way, a positive or a negative influence on a travel decision. A um, couple more. Back to Facebook, um, another stat relating to engagement with the platform. So uh, of the adults that are online in the US, 87% are Facebook users. Um, so you know, nearly ubiquitous presence. And of those, um, about a quarter are checking their accounts five times or more every day. So those that use Facebook are heavily involved with it, or a significant proportion of them are. Um, another item actually relating to Facebook, it's not on this slide, but um, th by 2015, the largest market for Facebook is expected to be India. Um, there are, are already more than 70 million mobile subscribers in India, and as that population of mobile users grows, um, it's anticipated that the, the adoption of Facebook, which is already fairly well established, but the, the adoption of Facebook is going to grow rapidly too. Um, and then a couple more relating to reviews, um, which is probably an area of greatest interest from a revenue management perspective. Uh, first, there's an estimated 160 million reviews in total on the top 10 sites. That's probably an out-of-date number already. Um, and more usefully in terms of analysis, 53% of travelers won't book a hotel that has no reviews. Uh, it's quite difficult difficult to imagine that there are any hotels left in many parts of the world that don't have at least one review, but uh, clearly there's an expectation that's uh, fairly widely held that you know, reviews are everywhere and that we can use them. Um, and finally, in terms of, re of engagement in review activity from the hotel perspective, the majority of travelers are more favorably impressed by hotels that engage in social media and respond appropriately to the reviews that they get. And this starts to give us an idea of where we need to concentrate um, our effort from, from the uh, overall revenue management perspective. So uh, enough of the, stat, uh, the, the stats. Let's look at the, the problems that we need to solve. Uh, if we think about social media in the context of revenue management, the first issue is going to be how do we really determine where the true opportunity lies as opposed to the hype. Um, as we've just seen, there's no shortage of statistical hype surrounding social media, but we really need to be able to see past that and apply a process and a more analytical approach of the, of the type that we're more used to. And uh, another problem area really is where the lines of responsibility fall for the activities relating to social media. In a, in a typical hotel or hotel group, there can often be multiple teams that have some level of involvement or ownership of social media activities. Quite often it starts with um, the marketing team, which is uh, an obvious place because the, the social media channels uh, primarily used for engagement with customers and, and for brand building and marketing activities. The, the sales team uh, will probably also have a role because the level of engagement that guests have with social media makes it, in, uh, makes it essential for, for sales to be engaging through those channels too. But from a revenue management perspective, there's not usually any direct ownership or involvement in social media and, and that really does represent an opportunity because there's a wealth of useful data that's sitting there and, and we really should be trying to tap into it um, as best we can. Now if we look at the, the technology aspects, there's no shortage of products or solutions that can help with managing the, the workflow process. So checking the reviews, measuring the ratings, making it easier to post responses, um, all of those sorts of things. But when it comes to decision support and integration, which really are the, the important parts from a revenue management viewpoint, the options that we have there are, are really much more limited, um, or at least they have been up until now. Uh, we'll see in a few minutes how that picture uh, may be changing a little. Um, 
as we've already identified, there is a proliferation of data sources which um, adds to the confusion because we need to decide out of all of that information that's available in the social media world, what, what's the useful stuff and, and what isn't useful. And uh, most importantly of all, um, even if we are able to extract some information and, and find a way to feed it into our decision-making processes, there's no real easy way to determine how that can impact on, on revenue. And in the end, from a revenue manager's point of view, if it doesn't have an impact on revenue, then we're really not very interested in it. So um, as we start uh, to look at <clears throat> the ways that we have for addressing those problem areas and, and, and dealing with those issues, we firstly maybe need to deal with the role that um, revenue management as a function has in the bigger social media picture. And from some of the conversations that I've had uh, recently with revenue managers, there's certainly the understanding of the need to be more involved with and engaged with uh, the things that um, other teams at the hotel or in the, in the hotel group are doing that relate to social media. Uh, and that can relate to um, reviews and customer feedback particularly, which are um, certainly linked to the overall value equation and which therefore have a part to play in, in uh, revenue management decisions. Um, or it, it may be something more related to tactical activities like uh, offers and promotions that are being um, rolled out at any given point. But the, the, the real key, I think, is that the effectiveness of, of revenue management can definitely be improved if we, if we broaden the picture. So by taking into account the, the impact um, that a promotion might have or that the improvement in the position in TripAdvisor rankings might have. Whatever we're doing, it, it needs to be a, a holistic approach and, and definitely not based on just one or two historical trends that we might be able to pick up from existing data sources. So what we should do uh, is start to um, identify the, the specific key measurements that we need to get and work those into the overall process. We're, we're really looking to, to take what we already have and, and build on it. Um, it. It is quite important, as, and as we get into some more of the details in a minute, it is quite important to think of this as something which really builds on and expands on what we already have. Um, rather than being a completely new method of making revenue management decisions. Uh, and again, just to be clear, we're not saying anything that, you know, in the current model, uh, we're not saying anything in the current model is wrong or broken, just that we should think about extending and developing the model to take account of more of the factors um, which are uh, clearly today um, having um, an immediate and, and future influence. Okay, so um, enough of the, the kind of the preamble, let's, let's start to get a little bit more specific. What's the link that we're trying to establish here and, and what are the data points that we, uh, we need to work with? Well, one really good reference point which has been um, quoted and referenced loads of times since it was published uh, actually comes from a piece of research done by uh, Chris Anderson at the Center for Hospitality Research at Cornell. And um, the reason it's been referenced so much, I think, is that it's really the first time we've seen someone quantify the link between review performance and potential impact on revenue. So uh, what the, the uh, findings of the research say is, uh, if a hotel increases its review score by one point on a five point scale, they can increase their rates by more than 11% and not have an adverse impact on occupancy or market share. So that starts to put some real numbers on the theory. And until this um, piece of research was published, 
there was a, a general feeling that there had to be a link between those factors, but no one was really sure or was able to put any kind of measurement against it. But now we have a reference point, and this, I'm sure, will be the first of many other measurements and evaluations which will gradually help us to refine and develop the links between rating and review performance on the one hand and revenue performance on the other hand. So uh, let's think of our objective here, if we try and map it out in a picture, as being to build what you might call a virtuous circle. So that as the, the ratings and the overall online reputation improves, or, or improve rather, that provides the potential space for uh, increases in rates, which um, potentially then also lead to increases in ADR and RevPAR, and give us a further base for improving and building on the guest experience, and so on around the circle. Now, um, I, I'm aware that obviously this is a somewhat simplified view of the process that we want to follow, but the, the basic principle, I think, is a good one. So what we need to do is to find the measurements that will help us to get that uh, circular process, that virtuous circle, started. And here they are. Or at least maybe here's one way that we can start to think about making it happen. So what we'll do um, for the next couple of pictures, we'll, we'll build up a, a bit of a view to show how we can establish the link and how we can use information that we can, we can obtain from the social media environment to feed into the revenue management decision process. So the starting points for that are uh, two measurements or variables and we'll call them the rate index and the value index. And these are really the, the key pieces of the jigsaw that will help us to turn the data into decisions. Now, I'm sure you're thinking at this point, what does that mean? How do I know what a rate index and a value index are? Well, let's just spend a couple of minutes and take a look at them in a little bit more detail. Okay, so, um, the picture here is uh, it's a simplified explanation of uh, the rate index and the value index, so we can maybe start to understand a little bit more of what they represent. There is a, a little bit more to it than we're, we're showing here, but this um, this will get us started on the process. Um, the base of this is, uh, let's assume we're, we're thinking about an individual hotel and its competitor set. Now, um, obviously, there, there is uh, quite often some variability in the way that hotels choose their list of competitors to compile their competitor set, um, but um, realistically, that's probably a topic for a, a different presentation session. So let's just assume that we have a valid range of competitors that are operating in broadly the same marketplace and with similar customer segments to our, um, our target hotel. And with those things in mind, look, let's look at the rate index first. If we take the range of rates for um, maybe for a particular category of guest um, that is being offered by the competitor hotels, so the hotels in our competitor set, and then we find the average of, uh, of all of those rates across the competitors, we can assign that average a value uh, of 1 or 100 percent. And then next what we'll do is we'll compare that with the average rate at our hotel for the same product category or guest category and we'll put it on the same scale. So uh, in this example we're indicating that our rate is 75 percent of the average competitor rate and that gives us a rate index of 0.75. And it's a similar principle, really, for the value index, although we're obviously using a different set of measurements for that. So this time we're taking the guest satisfaction scores, um, which we've derived from um, analysis of the reviews and the ratings across multiple social media sources. Um, and then we determine the average of that guest satisfaction score for the competitors, the same competitor set. And again, it can be 
an overall average, or we can be specific about the category of guest, like business traveler or family group or whatever we want to choose. And once we've got that competitor average for guest satisfaction, again, we, in the same way, we give that the 100% value and uh, do a, a comparison with our hotel's guest satisfaction score. So in this example, um, we're suggesting that our hotel score, uh, once we've done the analysis, comes in at 125% of the competitor average. So in this case, the value index is 1.25. Now, as I mentioned, um, there are some more detailed twists and turns around these calculations, but it, it kind of gives you the, the, the basic idea. Okay, so we've established our reference measurements. How are we going to use them? Well, um, put in the simplest way, we can use the value index and the rate index as the source points for suggested adjustments to our rates. And what we're doing here is we're taking a measure of the hotel's relative value determined according to the, the guest satisfaction information and the social media source information, and we're combining that with a measure of the hotel's position in the market from a, a rate perspective. And if we put that through some calculations, we can then derive a rate that would be the best alignment between the value um, uh, or, or rather the, the best alignment with the value and, and particularly when this is done for a specific traveler type, we can start to introduce a much more flexible and dynamic approach to setting rates which really reflect the value that our hotel is representing in the market. And using this mechanism not only brings together the variables that are re represented by um, guest satisfaction and market position for rates, it also gives us a whole other set of measurements of market conditions. Now, again, we're, we're seeing this as a, an addition to the existing models of uh, operation rather than replacing them. And uh, we have some activity in progress with some customers of ours at, at rate gain. So we can start to measure the incremental be uh, benefits that accrue from using a rate index and a value index as part of the process of managing and optimizing uh, revenue performance. Um, so far, that, that's uh, looking very positive, and uh, we'll be uh, looking forward to sharing more of the details and the results of that um, with you in, in future sessions. Now, um, while we're talking about uh, alternative approaches, um, I want to just quickly revisit another aspect we touched on earlier, which is the whole area of promotions and the useful information that's available in, in social media platforms. And one of the, uh, the other angles that we've been looking at from the rate game perspective is, is what we call promotions intelligence. And um, the idea here is to uh, extend the concept of uh, rate shopping and, and review tracking to look at the details of promotions that are being offered by our uh, chosen set of competitors. And um, the screenshot here is, a, is just an example of how that might be represented. So um, let's say we're, we're going to look at uh, Facebook, we'll look at Twitter. We can potentially also extract information from other sources um, like newsletters or uh, maybe email communications as well. And what this allows us to do is get uh, a quantitative view and also a qualitative view of the uh, promotions and the offers which are out in the marketplace. And we can then start to use those to determine whether we want to maybe compete directly with the other offerings in the market or, or maybe go in a, in a completely different direction. And this approach has other uh, link benefits as well. We might have a, a reservations or call center team that needs to be kept up to date with competitor promotions so that they can be ready to sell against them when guests are calling in. And, uh, linking back to the example of the Jetstar promotion, we don't have to restrict ourselves to only looking at activity in the competing hotel marketplace. We can also uh, potentially gather and analyze information from a whole range of different sources, um, 
airlines, other travel providers, anyone whose offers and promotions might lead to a direct impact on the potential sources of business for our hotel. So this is really another area where social media sources and, and the data that they generate, the information that they generate, can really start to be brought into the range and the view of the revenue manager. And um, of course, we want to make sure that we're using technology to support not only the analysis, but any of the, the follow-up activity as well. And um, just to reinforce that with one more uh, kind of sample screenshot, as we're, we're gathering and processing the information that, that leads us to the, uh, the value index and the rate index that we looked at earlier, that obviously sets us up for providing a way to see all of that useful information in one place and act on it as, as needed. Um, this is um, actually a, a snapshot of, uh, of the uh, review management application that, that we have at, at RateGain. And there's, a, there's actually a whole host of features and functions in here for um, displaying and responding to the reviews that have, have been extracted from various sources. Um, in terms of follow-up, uh, as well as being able to reply to the reviews, we also need a process for identifying any issues that uh, are recurring um, and maybe directing them to the appropriate department that can then start to take care of them, that, you know, whether that's housekeeping or the concierge desk or whoever it is. So um, our reputation management technology needs to give us that level of of workflow management so that we can really effectively do as much as possible um, in one place alongside all of the other um, uh, activities that we were looking at previously. Uh, and this starts to uh, really address another of the points that, that I was making earlier, which is ab about the, the holistic approach to all of these additional areas where maybe um, revenue managers have not, uh, up until now, been heavily involved in them. But by ensuring that we have the capability to uh, get the visibility and, and the control mechanisms that, that um, help with the process, that gives us a much greater level of ownership and insight and uh, allows us to get some more clarity maybe around the, uh, the lines of responsibility. Now, we're um, not too far away from um, the end of the, the presentation material, but let, let's see if we can start to summarize and collate the pieces of the picture into, a, into an overall view. Uh, from a, a process perspective, what we're really trying to do here is, uh, I guess, represented in this, in this picture. We've identified multiple uh, sources of data that we can add to those that we have already, um, and that might be in, in terms of market intelligence and our, our market position. Uh, it could be using the wealth of information relating to guest satisfaction and value that's uh, contained in the, uh, in the social media type of environment, or it could be other forms of market intelligence, and here the list really is virtually endless because as we've seen, the number and variety of potential sources of influence on demand for a hotel can stretch to being really a, a, a very long list. Um, the position that, that we are taking at, at rate gain is that um, we can do some analytical stuff, uh, which is represented in a very simplified form by a couple of uh, silver arrows pointing downwards on this picture. And, and then from, from that, we, we get some reference points and some measurements that we can use. And, and those are our uh, rate index and our value index. Um, then there's, uh, there's another silver arrow, and you'll have gathered by now that uh, that's our shorthand way to represent some clever stuff going on. Uh, this one leads us to pricing suggestions. And uh, in fact, even though this is, this is only represented here as a sequential model, what actually happens is it, it becomes a cycle. It becomes a, a cyclical process. So the, the pricing adjustments will change the index values for different categories of traveler or guest. And we can continue to measure and adjust 
um, and, and put the whole thing through the through the process again. And interestingly, really, the the part of this that probably represents the biggest opportunity for the future is the market intelligence piece. And um, we'll certainly be re returning to that um, in a number of ways in um, future sessions and in other things that we do um, in the rate gain environment. But once we have a view of a number of um, market influences and, and factors, we can really start to create models which are much more forecasts of demand and that really do start to change the approach by um, making it more about what's going to happen and less about assuming that what happened last week or last month or last year is necessarily going to predict what happens next. So uh, starting to grow on that whole um, area of, of market intelligence is certainly an area of, uh, of interest and activity uh, for us uh, on, on the rate gain side. So um, to conclude, um, I think you'll have gathered that uh, social media, or more accurately, the information that we can get from it, is increasingly important for revenue managers. There are opportunities to take some practical steps now which really can make a difference and um, that may be that we broaden our analysis and uh, ensure that we're using all of the information that's available in an effective way. Um, we can start to coordinate across different groups to get more visibility into maybe the marketing area or promotional activity. And because what we want to be driven by is data in the, the revenue management world, we can use all of the new sources of data that we have to lead to better decisions and ensure that we have a more complete picture of the market and all of the factors that are uh, potentially influencing it. Um, and that whole picture of, of social media influences, it, it can appear to be uh, somewhat chaotic, but um, from a, a rate gain perspective, we're certainly looking to create as many ways as possible to help with that whole situation. And um, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll continue to look at all of these themes and uh, the potential solutions and approaches that we can take in future presentations and future uh, webcast sessions. So um, that's pretty much the, uh, the end of the, uh, the, the presentation part of the session. So um, let's turn now to um, any questions or observations that you might have. OK, um, we have a question from uh, Jose. The uh, rate index, and the, this is the question, the rate index and the value index should be multiplied by any rate to get a suggested rate. Um, well, actually, it's, it's not quite as straightforward a relationship as that. Um, what, what, we're, what we're looking to do is to, um, uh, to use the uh, guidance that the rate index and the value index give us um, to create uh, what is effectively a suggested rate index. So there's the actual rate index, which we know is the comparison of our rates with our competitors. And then there's a suggested rate index, which will be based on the relative value that we're providing. Um, and what we'll do in the, in the background is we'll merge those or, or mix those things together in, in algorithms, which will create a suggested rate index. And we can then use the suggested rate index to um, determine the rate that we, we should be offering or that we could potentially be offering in the marketplace. So um, hopefully that gives you a little bit more of an insight into how that would work. Uh, a question from uh, Kareen. How, how many months uh, do you think we need to establish models from social media? That's a very interesting question. Um, uh, I think um, it really depends on the frequency with which um, reviews are being and social media sources are being 
uh, analyzed and collated in order to extract the useful information from them. Um, generally speaking, I would say that the, the social media environments for many hotels are very dynamic. There's an awful lot of uh, activity. There's quite a significant amount of review activity that tends to happen that uh, is particularly relevant and interesting. So um, I would not expect it to take a, a huge amount of time to get relevant information that we can measure against. Um, and of course, remember that the idea with this is that we want it to be uh, as much about what's happening now and what's potentially going to happen in the future as what's happened in the past. So um, we, we can certainly start to build a picture very quickly once we start to analyze the information that's, uh, that's available. And uh, of course, as time goes on, that helps us to re refine um, the picture a little bit more. Um, but we, we certainly shouldn't need to rely on a whole bunch of historical data in order to make it work. Um, question from Denise. Does your model pull in competitive rate and availability? If so, what sources are you using? Yes, it does. And uh, we're using um, what are effectively publicly available sources. So we have about 350 odd different channels through which hotels sell their rooms. Um, and uh, we track and record information on um, all of those channels in various ways. Um, we, we have a, a number of different aspects to what rate gain does and a number of different business um, functions that require us to collect and collate that information. Um, uh, as I say, most of it is from uh, publicly available sources, but some of it is also from connections that we've established um, with sources of that information. So yes, we are definitely pulling in um, the competitive rate and availability information um, as well. Uh, a very interesting question from uh, Luis. Can a, a revenue manager be the boss of the social media person? Is this healthy? That's a brilliant question. Um, uh, I would say that it is um, potentially very healthy. Um, depends on the circumstances. I am going to make sweeping generalizations here. Um, uh, of course, it, it very much depends on the specific circumstances of a particular hotel or a particular group and the way that they operate as to um, how an organization can be most effectively structured. But what I will say is this. Um, I think it's, um, it's important for the future successful functioning of a revenue management organization to at least have an insight into what is happening in social media. And the reason for that is because social media represents such a significant influencing factor, whether it's an influence in terms of the way that the hotel or the brand engages with its customers, whether it's an influence in terms of the feedback that guests are providing, and that is hugely useful information, or just in terms of the marketplace opportunity that is represented one way or another by social media. And I know that for many people, the jury is out on whether social media platforms actually represent a channel of distribution as such. And I think, that, again, that's another topic for a, for a different session. But um, I do think that there is value in um, having that visibility and having, if that means that the, the revenue manager becomes the owner or the boss of social media activity, then so much the better uh, in some ways, I'm sure. But you know, re regardless of the organizational construct that we use for that, uh, I think there is potentially some value in, in opening up that picture a little more and broadening the scope of the responsibility that, that revenue managers have. Um, I hope that's uh, not offended anybody or uh, caused any issues that um, somebody may have to deal with in a in an organization of their own, but uh, there you go. All opinions expressed are only mine. And as I said at the beginning, I'm not a revenue manager, so I can say what I like. Uh, OK, this is a, a question from uh, Grisha. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Um, my everyday problem is that hotels with a higher category um, permanently lower permanently the rate. Um, how can we fight against this as the market is very seasonal? 
Um, I think that that's a, that's also a, an interesting um, question. Um, if you're operating in a market where there's a lot of price pressure, I think what you do need to take account of um, is the um, the uh, the value that you're offering, and that that really is the whole point of um, what we what we've been presenting here today. Is that taking price into account? Um, is obviously important, but you need to look at it from the point of view of what is the value that you and your hotel are delivering to your guests, and, and look at it in terms of the particular categories of guests as well. So you can look at it overall, or you can break it down into um, uh, individual uh, segments and categories of guests. And by doing that, what that then, using this mechanism that we're outlining here, what you're then able to do is to determine what's the, the difference between the value that you're offering in comparison to your competitors, and maybe that gives you validation to say, okay, well, I'm quite happy that my price can be slightly higher than the competition is offering because I know that my value is relatively higher, and therefore guests will be prepared to pay more in recognition, slightly more, in recognition of the fact that there's a, a higher level of value being offered. And again, this comes back to the whole cyclical um, nature of this, because what you also want to be then doing is promoting the fact that your value is higher than your competition, because that provides the feedback and it provides the basis to allow you to continue to push forward with that and uh, and hopefully reap the rewards of it. Now, I know, I'm. Um, uh, completely simplifying here as well, but certainly within this model, there are definitely ways in which you can you can start to take advantage of this and maybe look at the way that you're providing your um, your setting your pricing decisions um, in a, in a slightly different way because you have more information available to you that is based on more different sources of of uh, information. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it as far as the questions. Thanks to everyone for, uh, for those questions. Um, we'll wrap up the webcast at this point. Thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today and for your excellent and interesting questions and feedback. Um, I hope you found something that was useful or interesting in the various areas that we've covered. Um, and, um, of course, we're always ready to uh, to continue the conversation, and um, um, we'll be um, uh, glad to uh, to do that and to hear from you again. So, uh, thank you very much again for uh, your participation, and we hope to be talking to you again.